that whole area, both sides and the back, is going to be stainless steel. So the next plan of attack is to get this sump fitted. Trimming and planing and sanding that down to the right thicknesses, that's going to be challenging. Well, it's time to get stuck into caving this cabin sole in the heads. So the game plan with a splashback for this oven is that, as you can see, I've painted an area around this space. And the whole idea for that is that that whole area from the outline of the white right down, and also once I put a shelf in at the bottom, that whole area, both sides and the back, is going to be stainless steel. I'm only going to be using 0.8 millimeter 316 stainless steel plate so it won't be that heavy, but it's a really easy way to clean things ahead. As you can see, this space is actually quite big, quite large. Here I am sitting here and that space is much bigger than me. The stove oven I have is nowhere near going to fill that space. And the reason for that is that I made it larger to take into account should I decide to get a larger stove ahead, the space will accommodate much larger ovens. In fact, I measured pretty much the standard largest ones so that I could get one of those in there. As I say, if I decide to upgrade and get a larger oven ahead. So the idea is that this will be CAD designed as in cardboard assisted designed. So I'm just gonna use the cardboard as you can see here I've got a whole bunch of that, and I've spoken with the guys that are going to be making it up. So I'll get that made as a pattern, and the good guys that will make it up should be able to get that correct the first time. Once it is made up, I'm only going to be screwing it in place should I ever need to get to anything behind here, including the steel plate itself. That can be removed, as can those lining panels, so that inspection can be done without completely destroying the furniture. So that's CAD templates number one. Now it's a matter of transferring that to some thin board for the proper templates so that I've got a good template for the stainless steel guys to make this up.
So these templates can now go off to the stainless steel guys who will cut and bend all of these pieces up and hopefully it all comes back and just slips straight back in. So the next plan of attack is to get this sump, this shower sump, fitted. You can probably see here, I've got some masking tape on the hull plating itself. So I've marked where that needs to be mounted. And because of the access, what I'm going to do is I'm mounting it in such a way that the fasteners that will actually hold it down onto these little bearers that I made, fancy little rosewood bearers, the fasteners will be able to be accessed from the companionway here by just removing the cabin sole here. And what I've also done is because this one's quite thin and obviously because the hull itself has all that shape to it, all the curves, what I've done is I've worked it out so that the sump itself, when the boat is level, the sump will be two with a very, very slight fall to the center line of the boat. And what that's meant is the outboard end, very little packing is required. So that's why that one's very thin. And of course, you wouldn't be able to screw into that I will be using fasteners and Fix 15 bonding so that with both of them, that will be staying in place. And because of the mounting brackets on the sump, what I'll be able to do is put fasteners on the base in the center and on the inboard edge. And although I will be using the Fix 15, the good thing about that is, should that sump ever need to be removed, it will remove without wrecking these bearers. The other thing that I'll be doing while I'm here I've made up this little packer, this little wedge shape, and that's for this very aft end of the cabin sole in the heads. As you can see right down here, that too I've marked with texture. So I just need to give this a little bit of a sand. Same with the hull, give them a wipe, put some Fix 15 on and bond them in place. Also to point out is my rather fancy deluxe scraper, which I've made a nice radius curve which will be the perfect radius for doing the coving in the heads panels here, both for, as I said before, the vertical panels and that cabin sole. I've got another scraper for these two bulkheads that are on a 45 degree angle. That's a much shallower angle, but this has come up a treat. Well, I've just cut up this bit of rosewood, but man, this is gonna be complicated to get down to the right thickness on each corner because that piece is the middle piece for the shower sump, which needs to be wider. And so each corner has quite a difference in height. I've marked it out. That was the easy bit. Trimming and planing and sanding that down to the right thicknesses, that's gonna be challenging.
will all up, I think that's been a decent solution to get that sump sitting nice and horizontal. Those little bearers doing the job nicely. The Fix 15 and screws will hold that in place. So now what the plan is, is to just get this in place, mark where all of those little bearers are, just so that I can give a little bit of a sand to roughen up the surface of the paint on the hull plating. As I've done to those bearers, apply a bit of Fix 15, drop it in place, put a little bit of weight on top, and that should be that. But I won't be able to do that until I've got that plumbing for the drain in place. So this will just sit aside at the moment until I get all of those fittings and hose in place. Okay, well it's time to get stuck into coving this cabin sole in the heads. It should be a fairly simple process really. I just need to mix up quite a large volume of thickened epoxy, which just involves using the same epoxy that I've been using, adding that filler, making up the paste, and then coving it in to both the sole here, but also into these corners. This corner is a 90 degree angle. This one here is about a 30 degree angle. And so what I've done, I've made up my own coving spatulas. This one I just bought from the local hardware store and I've taken a very tiny amount off the edges of that. And that will give a nice cove on that 30 degree angle there. And then I made up a rather fancy rosewood spatula scraper here. That's had two coats of epoxy as I normally do. I just did that with other jobs. I didn't make any real special effort with that. Just sort of did it along the way. But that will give me the amount of coving that I really want in these 90 degree angles, both in the corner here where these bulkheads are and also on the sole. I hope that you enjoyed my views of this beautiful Sunshine Coast everybody. They remind me daily of why I am building Mistress of Freedom. There is much good boat work continuing and I feel like I have the bit between my teeth now. Till the next episode.
Now getting back into these cabins so that I can get the insulation. Can I ask you to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and please check out my website. And of course, leave a comment because I like reading what you have to say. <laughs>